Yes. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Tim. Sorry. Hi, Tim. Welcome. Good night. Nice to see you all. I'm Tim. Nice Hello, from Hello Australia. everyone. Thank you for joining. Okay. I'm looking forward thank, to it. It's very nice so to be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Tim. Very glad to have you. It is my pleasure. Okay. That's All right. Great. Thanks. Do you have the paper? It's being uploaded right now. Okay. And here is. Uh, okay. Continue, please. Introduce yourself, please. Continue with yeah. the introduction. For, for, on, for those who. Uh, and why language, large language models do not have a social understanding, which uh, has tons of literature. Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, as, from, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah. Uh, from my point of view, uh, the, the problem with the uh, next token prediction is that uh, uh, it, it's based on uh, statistics of uh, words co occurring uh, with each other. And the, it's not exactly what's... Uh, uh, what what we see in the real world because uh, to me meaning is always related to the real world and uh, uh, that's exactly what uh, I am talking about when I mention context and I uh, I say that uh, context has uh, very important role in uh, in language and in uh, whatever we 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 talk about so if we are not taking into account uh, what uh, the uh, the the events in the real world are then we we have no understanding of of, of all that so because of that, basically, I, I'm saying that it's hard to expect uh, large language models to, to understand uh, natural language. Okay. So here, here comes the question. Mm -hmm. there, uh, there's a question which has been, uh, uh, been engaged the minds of hundreds of philosophers, mathematicians, logicians and people from our the disciplines for about 3,000 or more years ago. What is language? If you could, if you please could explain. Uh, yes. Concisely. Uh, I mean, uh, your perspective, because there are sure. hundreds of tons of literature on what language. As a linguist, I can confirm that there are tons of, hundreds of tons, tons of literature on what language yeah. is. And what speech is? Uh, yes, uh, uh, for me, a language is uh, is the reflection of uh, how intelligence models the world. Uh, however, intelligence does that implicitly, and we we don't know, uh, we we don't see, we do not uh, have uh, this on 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 the end of our fingers. Uh, so we we don't uh, really recognize uh, what intelligence does, but uh, language uh, turns the implicit in our head into explicit uh, as far as it can, and uh, that that's uh, important uh, uh, piece. Of, uh, of the linguistic me mechanics and the, uh, how it works. Because uh, uh, in, in my opinion, language uh, is uh, functioning uh, by the rules uh, imposed by intelligence. Uh, language is a product of intelligence and also a tool used by intelligence. And because of that, uh, very tight connection. Uh, we we cannot uh, consider language and intelligence separately. And uh, in order to understand uh, the laws 
governing language. We, we need to understand uh, how intelligence works, uh, what's, uh, it, it, what are its components and the algorithm. And uh, in my theory, in, in that paper, I propose uh, that uh, se several hypotheses about how intelligence works and uh, what intelligence is. Okay. So, uh, you, as I can see, uh, my, I mean, I mean, my check is that language and intelligence are two absolutely different things. How can you relate them? How can you see them as interconnected phenomena? How can you bridge bridge a gap in your point of view? I, and and yeah. by intelligence, do you mean human intelligence or machine intelligence? Or, or mm. is it or is it fuzzy? Or is it uh, in, in fact, intelligence uh, uh, I I ascribe intelligence to all the uh, living uh, creatures on earth uh, because uh, in their evolution uh, all the living beings uh, had to develop uh, certain competencies to uh, differentiate uh, the uh, conditions uh, in the environment and uh, how to proceed on the different conditions and how to survive the the need to survive to to feed to uh, to breed uh, made them intelligent uh, because they they need to differentiate and to make best decisions uh, but uh, uh, we we observe different uh, levels of intelligence and different scopes uh, uh, of uh, intelligence applied to, to the environment. And uh, definitely human intelligence is the, uh, the, the most developed one. And uh, it, it is reflected in, 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 in the availability of language and uh, in, in the development of uh, different languages and especially artificial languages uh, by humans. And uh, I do not uh, uh, like deny machines of intelligence, but for now humans were not uh, capable of uh, making machines ultimately intelligent as intelligent as humans i mean so uh, that 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 that's my take on 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 that uh, subject yeah uh, so now there is a very uh, intriguing question these days that computation is a fundamental part and it, and, be, and it began since uh, some philo philosophers of mind uh, have proposed the computationalist theory of mind or brain. Yes. Uh, I be began with uh, Gary Marcus, Professor Gary Marcus, uh, and several others, uh, which, uh, which considered computation to be fundamental to, the, to human cognition intelligence. Now, the question is, what kinds of what kind or what kinds of computation do you think maybe involved when we're yes. talking about uh, that's a that's a very complicated question I I know I understand and I don't expect a lot but just uh, brief me convince me or others uh, that how how do you see how, what comp what role does co computation play? when we're talking about language and intelligence. So, yes, yeah. good, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I agree that that question is uh, pretty complex and uh, uh, we need to be very careful about our proposals about uh, the possible algorithm. And uh, uh, for me, 
there are two uh, aspects uh, of different uh, approaches to intelligence and uh, we we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, definitions of intelligence and uh, most of them uh, mention solving tasks uh, uh, adaptation to environment and uh, many other things uh, including uh, behaving like uh, and acting like a human uh, but uh, for me uh, <clears throat> if we are accepting uh, the computational allegory of of mind then uh, probably it will be difficult to use those definitions uh, to produce such a computer right and the okay. uh, because of that, I proposed my own definition of intelligence, and it is basically uh, uh, about differentiation. Or, in other words, and uh, more precisely, I would say, uh, it is our ability to recognize, process, and produce differences and uh, uh, it provides insight uh, on on how to build a machine uh, a computing device capable of reaching the human level of intelligence and basically uh, uh, from from the from this idea of differentiation as the fundamental ability of intelligence, we can easily come up with a uh, algorithm, which I call uh, a, a multi-dimensional uh, search. So basically what I am saying that computation uh, behind intelligence is not really a computation. It's a series of measurements and comparisons. That's it. But in order to uh, understand how this uh, algorithm works, uh, we need to introduce uh, one more component of, of intelligence, and that's uh, comparable properties of objects and actions and everything around us. And uh, to start with, I propose to view everything comparable as, as an object, as a potential object. And the uh, comparable objects, they have uh, uh, these comparable properties which allow uh, basically comparing them, classifying them, and uh, etc. And uh, what properties... Uh, are uh, they have uh, uh, not points for measurements like uh, rulers and uh, measuring tapes uh, with the points and the digits on them. Uh, I propose to, to use ranges. And th those ranges, uh, they serve several properties. First uh, is a, a, a property for estimating a uh, value of given property for, for a given object with respect to that property. So uh, we are not making precise measurements when we uh, look at some, some objects. We may just say that that person is tall, but that is not uh, a precise measurement. And that's very important uh, concept because uh, on, on this idea of ranges, uh, basically we, uh, we may uh, found the theory of both intelligence and language. Because uh, further, I, I will explain that uh, words in, in, in natural languages they uh, do not refer to objects uh, directly. They rather refer to, to 
to these ranges of properties. And the way uh, languages work, they, they filter. Again, we are back to, to this uh, series of measurements and comparisons. And uh, because, of, because of that, uh, we, we may uh, finally filter out the object we are interested in uh, handling and processing uh, from, from the context. And again, we, are, we will constantly return to the context, which is the real world and to, to the uh, comparable properties and to differentiation on, on the base of those properties. So uh, what is exactly differentiation? What do you maybe, uh, uh, it, yes, cr I, it, 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 it crosses my mind, whether you're talking about calculus or mathematical differentiation, uh, no, that, that, al that also uh, happens in, in bi biology and other related what, fields. What, what or I mean by, it, yeah. Yeah, sure, please go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Uh, what I mean by differentiation is uh, what we or, or ordinarily uh, speak uh, when we say that something is different from something else. So, uh, for instance, uh, let's consider uh, a, a very simple uh, situation. Uh, uh, for instance, someone uh, says, take the ball and you are in a room with with only one ball there. So if, uh, if only one ball is in the room, then uh, by using uh, a complex property, uh, which is category of objects and range on that property, which stands for, for balls <laughs> in particular, uh, that range, in, in in reality is quite wide because we have different kinds of balls in, in, in real life. So any, any kind of ball will fit into that range. And if okay. we have only one ball in, in the room with us, then that one reference will be enough. But if we, for instance, uh, uh, say we have three balls of different color, for instance, green, blue, and pink. And someone says, take the red ball. Okay, first we are down to three balls only because a uh, ball was mentioned, but red color is uh, is not present, but red color is closer to the pink shade, right? Than to, to blue or green. So most likely the person in that situation will expand the range of red color and pick the, the pink ball as the intended one. But it's not the only thing that will happen. That person will also note for himself that the person who issued the command has some issues with differentiating colors or with uh, addressing them in the speech. So we are starting to approach uh, this theory of mind uh, and, uh, and, and so on. So we already know how that person views colors in the real life. And uh, we, we know it for, for ourselves that we, uh -huh, we, we have some information about that person and his abilities. So, okay. a, and again, we, we are uh, using properties for differentiation. So you pointed out a very, I think, important concept pinpointed it and that's context which uh, i think many of us are familiar with that but not appropriately 
in, in linguistics, we have we have to make a distinction between the co-text and context. Co-text are uh, uh, sorts of words that come together, are pr probabilistically connected, uh, in the sense of mycolopes, if I'm not wrong, because 2000 word to wick, that's what the what co-text means. Actually, which, which, which is often uh, neglected when um, uh, I, I skim some of the literature, they sometimes call it context. It's not context. Context is, is, is a much broader concept, uh, including all the pragmatic, somatic and discursive functions. So what is your perspective when we're talking about uh, of context? Is it the same as Mikolo Tau or is it different? Is it a probabilistic phenomena? Like mentioned in the large language models, used in the large language models, or is it something Non statistical. What is, what is that exactly? To, that? Could you please clarify, clarify yeah. that? Yeah, to, sure. to me, context is definitely not statistical. It's, uh, it's what we have in the real, real world around us. And there are, uh, there are actually two pieces to the context because uh, the, the first piece of the context is. Uh, uh, composed of all the objects which we can physically interact with. So, uh, for instance, uh, a, a wall, a window, a, a, a cup, and uh, the, those kinds of objects. Uh, and the, the second piece to the context are objects which we can discuss. So, Immediately, we, we can broaden this uh, context uh, to, to the uh, beyond any limits because we can discuss imaginary objects, hypothetical objects, objects that uh, no longer exist, uh, and uh, objects that we cannot uh, interact with because they are very distant from us or uh, objects that we don't know yet. For instance, NBA champions of uh, 2025. Even though we know that there will be some champion team uh, in, in that year, we, we don't know which one will, uh, it will be. But even without knowing that, we, we can already plan that we will celebrate with them their, their achievement, right? So uh, context is a very broad thing and uh, we, we need to be able to differentiate those pieces uh, which are relevant to us. And uh, this differentiation is quite different from uh, from uh, traditional approaches to to references, and uh, uh, we we will discuss this later, hopefully, because that's a very broad uh, topic, and uh, I I want to be very very specific about references and 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 meaning, because uh, we we. We really need to 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 nail it uh, in in the in the mind uh, of uh, our participants, and uh, uh, because if we understand all those pieces, how they work together, it, it will be a great achievement of today's meeting. Okay, so you know the the terms reference. Uh, meaning uh, and these semantic philosophical concepts you mentioned have a rich history. You know, lots of books, lots of thousands of books, lots of 
or uh, and Ray Gay's intention intention versus extension theory yeah. Yeah. And, and among others. What is your specific take on what references is and what meaning is? Yeah. In, in uh, uh, from your point of view, I mean, I'm not, I'm not yeah. imposing my, I, I have mine. Yeah, please go. Ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for this question because uh, uh, I uh, when when I realized uh, how differentiation works with words and uh, how how properties are used in this process, I realized that I have to reconsider uh, all, all the available, all the existing theories of reference and meaning because they, they were not, they were just not good enough for my purposes. And the, what, uh, the, the way I see the, uh, the 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 reference is is this differentiation so for instance we already talked about those uh, three balls in the room so when we want to differentiate uh, an object from 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 the context uh, we need to provide uh, several filters uh, which will help us to differentiate uh, that, that, that particular object. So when we provided uh, the, the, the first filter ball, we, we, le we were left with three balls in the room. So we needed additional filter and we introduced this red, so color, because uh, there were three balls of different colors and uh, providing this uh, filter is uh, in a, is is sufficient to differentiate the the proper ball in our uh, reference. So uh, again, in a different context, in a different room, red ball may not be sufficient to differentiate the proper object. So that's why I am talking that references are not uh, uh, context independent. They always take the context into account. The number of uh, objects passing through each filter ne needs to be uh, uh, taken into account because if we, if we are careless about it, then we may be uh, very imprecise. And uh, uh, there, there is a paper uh, by uh, Alexandra Lucioni and, uh, et al. Uh, about uh, even uh, the use of over-specification in, in natural languages. Because uh, you see, when we provide more than enough uh, references, or as I say, filters, to, uh, to differentiate some object, we, we are safe uh, from over-specification, which will lead to, to an empty set. Because uh, we are talking about specific properties of, of a specific object. We, we cannot uh, uh, provide uh, uh, more, more than enough uh, such filters that all, all the objects will be filtered out and we will be left with, a, with an empty set. But when we are back to large language models that make stuff up, uh, okay. even, even a single uh, reference uh, may, 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 may lead to uh, such over-specification and uh, finally to an empty set. And it, I got it. That, that's the problem with, the, with large language models because they do not pay respect to the context. Yes, thank you. It seems Tim has a question. Tim, go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay, how are you? Um, 
I Hi. guess the sport. <laughs> so I've been and welcome, deeply uh, immersed. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Welcome. I've been deep, Bless you. Um, I've been deeply immersed in trying to build human centric AI. So I started with the information bank back in 2000, where people would share links, not documents. And it led to W3C involvement with what's called solid and uh, verifiable credentials or credentials and various other elements. So obviously there's a lot of semantic web that exists. Um, and part of my argument would be that I don't think RDF can do it in its entirety and that there needs to be, and I guess the thing I wanted to put forward was that when creating a personal AI agent that is intended to support personal ontology. So I mean that from the, from the psychology point of view, more than the, you know, than the sort of the Facebook graph, if that makes sense. Spatiotemporal um, support is vital in my view. So I, I apologize if my, if my views don't come through too humble, <laughs> but um, I guess the point is, is that words have different meanings in different places and they track back to different locations and, and, and context. So if you're reading a 1920s article about uh, some parliamentarians are having a gay time, it's a very different thing to what you might interpret if it was in the news today on Fox News or something like that. Um, yeah. Equally, I've, I've posted a thing about uh, my thongs. Now, in Australia, that means footwear. And so it's not just about the way in which we can model um, both graph and vector-based multidimensional um, <laughs> structures, probably into a, I, I currently think probably into a HDF5 type file format, um, but in there, you actually end up with, with, with far more temporal or far more dimensions when you get into the social domain and that these, these structural analysis of, I mean, language, um, I love some of what you had to say about language, consciousness, status of the observer, um, you know, to be able to, uh, support sense-making between people of, of all languages, of all languages of prayer, some of which aren't written down. They never had books. So in order to be able to get that resolution where um, a simple a simple word like thong is not taken out of the context or, you know, and the equivalence of that. I, I note that the, the uh, it, yeah, the space here, temporal stuff, I didn't, I, I just wanted to flag and say, we got to map the whole history of words and create like a, a, a content centric protocol based on, uh, the glyphs and the, you know, the structure of language that then can be operated locally. And yes, it's a bit more advanced than a dictionary, um, in the word processor or something like this, but, um, to then be able to support that personal ontology and sense making between human beings that is in systems where the intention is a human centric outcome, where our technologies are, is our tools, not the other way around, which you know, depends on ideology. Yeah. yeah thanks. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you, Tim. Uh, that that uh, was sorry. First of all, excellent uh, question. Uh, before you, yeah, uh, before you uh, answer, uh, Alex. First of all, we're uh, we're glad to have Professor Doctor. Biatkina, Natalia Dabukorjovic from the Ukrainian Academy of Sciences. Very glad to have you. Welcome. Very honored. Very, very honored to have you. Sorry, I, I can't speak Ukrainian. I just have a, I can speak a little bit of Russian. So, Dabukorjovic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we're honored to have you here, Professor. Uh, very glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am glad to meet you, uh, uh, Lyle uh, I, I just, I just want, I just want to show my gratitude and respect. I uh, for for your precious time for being here. 
They're <laughs> thank highly you. appreciated. I, uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm a little bit uh, late. Uh, sorry for this because no I was uh, far from home Don't from computer. <laughs> no. Don't be pleased. And, and also, uh, thank you. And also, Mr. Wang, the chief of Lingo AI. Well, Henry, welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome. Go, go ahead, please. Thank you all for joining. Oh, oh, like, yeah, Alex, thank you. Go ahead, please. Thank you. For thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, so, okay. My honor. Tim, uh, may I check whether I understood so, you? Um, nice talk. Yeah. Uh, Very inside. Thank you. Uh, so, Tim, yeah. uh, uh, back to your question. Uh, I, I would like to check whether I understand you uh, well. Uh, and I want to ask a question with respect to, to the series of books about Harry Potter. So, is Dumbledore alive or not? So... Well, what, well, what's I mean, your question about that? Well, it's Bas uh, basically uh, 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 there's a note I saw in the documentation about Julia. So, Prolog, for example, is very, very good with RDF structured data, but it doesn't do vector data and it doesn't do GPU based processing. So, given that there's glyphs, there's all sorts of things. Uh, heraldry is an interest of mine, for example, and that has deep meaning in it. There's, you know, there are many, many languages of prayer, essential for peace. So, in these in these ecosystems, one of the articles said was talking about Plato, and uh, you know, giving a description of Plato being human. But in the context of now, is he still human? Or is he a memory? Yeah. Because he was definitely. human. But at, at a certain time, he was human and he was living flesh. And, you know, I've spent some time uh, with in media, working in media. And so I've known actresses very, very well. And there is a difference between the um, character or the, the personality or the identity that they may manifest, um, particularly if they're method actors versus who they actually are, you know, yes. versus what you see on television. Um, and, and certainly that also plays a role with uh, law of agency. So I've recently participated in the United Nations Digital Global Digital Compact, and I have found that I appear to have been making suggestions about creating verifiable claims instruments to support human rights based tools that we can use in our agreements with one another to have shared values. But seemingly I'm one of the first people to have done that because I do so as an individual, not on behalf of my government or on behalf of Microsoft or someone else, which is, which is fairly overwhelming in this United Nations context that after so many years of development of these tools, uh, the human rights part of it hasn't been supported. So. Does that answer your question? So I'm saying that words, if, if you had this spatio-temporal graph, yeah. right? So space and time. So my surname, Holborn, is a place in London, just outside the city of London. It is a place where the Magna Carta was negotiated in the church. Yeah. It is a place involving uh, Templars. It is in, you know, involving many different, you know, the start of common law. The word itself in Old Norse apparently means hillfort, but it was not the it was not the Vikings who made hillforts. But the Vikings needed to pass through the hillfort before they were able to go into Londinium. Yeah, and so this context, and if you go through and do a history and you look at old newspapers and things, I mean English is only one thousand years old, if that, but. Um, you know, even just a hundred years ago, if you look at the old newspapers, then there are the same words talking about the same entity that has different spellings using yeah. movable type. But so context of mind to be able to get the signal to noise ratio right in order to be able to, uh, you know, support the wave function in effect in relation to the freedom of thought and consciousness. And the means in which to meaningfully connect with one another to be able to make sense 
and support common sense needs that context about the connection of space and time in relation to our communications with one another in order to find the pace. Yeah, I understand. And uh, uh, in uh, the, you, you actually uh, raised uh, a, a lot of issues in, in your, in your question. And uh, I, I, I really believe that uh, you, you will like uh, this paper because uh, <laughs> there, there are actually several, uh, several pieces, uh, several moving pieces in, in that mechanism that, uh, that will help uh, to address all, all those issues and, uh, and do it efficiently and uh, reliably, I would say. So well, the, I, I, the... I'm halfway through with the implementation. So um, I would welcome collaboration because uh, yeah. for, we, because yeah. we, we, we cannot have royalties or ownership over language. You know, it should not be proprietary. I'm not saying that we should enslave people to be able to figure out how to get all languages of prayer available. Uh, stonemasons were paid to build churches because that way they could look after their families whilst doing something good for the community. But they did not own the church. Um, sure. But 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 in that there's you know we need to have these commons. We need to have these resources that are shared, and we did not need that with pens and paper or songlines in Aboriginal Australian Aboriginal heritage, where there are many languages that would never about books. Yeah, I understand that. So. Uh, back back to, to 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 this theory proposed in this paper. Uh, so we we have uh, several uh, moving pieces to to the uh, to the mechanism of language, and the uh, first one is related to meta information. So when we store information in in memory, uh, we do it in the form of sentences but not really sentences as they are <laughs> mentioned in books and uh, uh, etc. Uh, we are talking about uh, the sentences with already resolved uh, references to, to the context about which those sentences are uttered, right? So, uh, in, in a longer discourse, uh, most speakers do not uh, repeat where it happens, when it happens, and, and so yeah. on. Uh, author of, of some sentence is also not repeated every time because it's inefficient. It's, it's enough to do it once. So, yeah. but that information is still important because when we uh, need to ask a question when someone did something so we need to to have this information around the sentence which contains that information because otherwise we will need to repeat reading the whole book uh, all over again. So, uh, yeah. what what I propose is to add uh, time tags, location tags, author tags, uh, reliability tags, source tag uh, in inside this resolved sentence. Also, we need to resolve all the references in that sentence. For instance, when I am talking about uh, that room with three balls, pink, blue, and green. So what I will do, I will prepare a set as a programming concept, right? So, and I will store the objects which will have some identification and uh, uh, those objects will be unique. And I will store all the information that, that is re relevant to, to each 
such object. So for instance, when I, I mention take the red ball and someone takes the pink one. So I will, uh, for, for this uh, pink ball, I will uh, identify that pink ball as some object in that set. And I will provide information that it was mentioned in, in sentence with such and such ID at such and such time. And it was picked by such and such other object because everything is an object. People are objects, uh, balls are objects, ideas are objects, everything is an object. Object in the context. And when we uh, track all those time tags, all those actions that are involving uh, those objects, then we can at any given point in time say that we know what happens to that object. Or if we don't have any information, we know uh, points around that point and we can somehow interpolate, right? So okay. there's two there's two bits of feedback or considerations that are listed. If I, if, I hope I'm not interrupting. Yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, no, go ahead. So, so, so the first is that is that concept of well the first is imagine we're not talking about at, at the moment the the united nations global digital compact etc are trying to deliver uh internet connectivity to every person on the planet via project connect via unicef and, and things like this and so the hope is that we can build peace infrastructure we can we can educate children we can protect them from harms we, we're not seeking to invest in clubhouses for warlords we are seeking to be able to create health and you know a wealth of health basically and, and thrivability and transformation of life so in those environments you need these governmental systems because the probability that every family can have their own Mac mini type of you know a small device that they plug into their router that can run their own personal AI for their for themselves and and, and most importantly also for their children mm -hmm. um, to make sure that agency in relation to guardianship is not simply via the stewardship of a school or a government but the family and culture and our humanity our souls you know um, is cared for. Again, not every ideology, but as long as it supports rule of law, it should be allowed. So it's like Mac versus Linux versus Windows. You know, I'm trying to build something with open standards and interoperability so it, it can work and people can go in other places around the world and it can work. So in that, you want something that can run at least on a standard computer right, the laptop or something like this, maybe not a phone, maybe the battery life on the phone means doing the computational process at this time is too hard, but you know, it's, it's packaged for a home. So then the next part of that is speaking one language, just language, just for basic ontologies using, you know, the, the use of natural language to be able to structure ontology, support personal ontology, have a, a, a store for selfhood and one for personhood. Um, that is the social experiences with other people as is distinct to the things that are just about you. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the multiple different ways in which people view you over time, which is constantly temporarily changes and you, you, your AI agent still needs to be able to go through and process that in, you know, contextually. But here we are, we have people from many different parts of our world. And we have our interpretation happening in probably American English, I would, I would, I would guess. So as, as we diversify this, and as we try to connect the spirit of people from anywhere in the world with one another to help build this peace infrastructure around the world, 
to help build those houses, to help clean the water, to be able to get rid of the plastic and turn it back into plastic or petrol or whatever, <laughs> to be able to do all these things that we want to do as a human family, then you end up with these huge amounts of data. Now, one way of doing that is on the cloud, right? You can have a system online and every time someone says a word, it is intercepted and, and perhaps manipulated or, you know, something, you know, there may be consequences, who knows? Another way of doing it is to be able to chunk it down and figure out how to stream in real, you know, a bit like computer games, figure out how to stream pieces on an as needed basis in order to, to be able to be processed based on the context of what the computer is actually doing. Um, and so I think that, that I just wanted to highlight that because if you look at the corpus of just human languages alone, let alone the history and the places and the culture, the, the culture of humankind that it molds into like a protocol. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it is not one file. It is, it is, there's an enormous amount of knowledge that and isn't it, really it, there. You yes, know, it's there, but, but that's really knowledge there. in different languages, right? Yes, this is true. Yeah. And uh, even in different dialects or in different uh, cultural uh, aspects. And that's exactly what uh, my theory uh, uh, is respecting. So yeah, yeah, uh, sure. basically uh, information is stored in language agnostic language independent uh, form. So uh, all those properties, they, they are not tied to, to, to specific language or specific culture. Because- One of the, uh, yeah. one of the, uh, one of the sorry, computational sorry problems- Sorry to interrupt both of sorry. you. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, I think you, can, you can discuss a problem after the chat. Uh, uh, yeah, there are other questions. Probably. And feel okay. Free. Sorry. For, yeah. Don't be sorry. You thank, you, uh, thank you for your uh, time. Uh, uh, Tim, uh, let, oh, let's okay. keep yeah. in touch and let, let's exchange uh, questions. Uh, yeah, sure. I will be happy to, to answer. That's what I'm thank talking you very about. Much. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so another question. A very fundamental question. Of course, I'm not an expert in front of the giants, especially Professor Vyatkina, who is an expert in logic. But what is compositionality? What do you mean by, I posted some papers uh, in chat. What's your, is a, a, a drop in the ocean, just uh, as a result. What do you mean by compositionality? Do you mean some sort of logical, lambda calculus, their logical comp compositionality based on mm -hmm. mathematical or logical comp calculus. You know, there are lots of lambda, uh, lambda calculus, lambda calculus, lots of cal calculus. Even this kind of, kind of formal compositionality or any other sort of it. Or Fre just Frege is the form of Goto Frege. Mm -hmm. Uh, for uh, against compositionality, what, what, what's your what's your perspective? Yeah, Alex? Uh, in, in in fact, uh, Frege uh, proposed two different uh, principles. The mm -hmm. first one was uh, indeed the the principle of compositionality, and uh, I I have a problem with that principle, and uh, I have. Uh, a strong uh, preference towards the second uh, principle, uh, uh, basically principle of context proposed again by Frege, uh, when he said that uh, first we, we need to understand uh, the sentence and then sentence will provide context for understanding words. Uh, it's uh, it wasn't supported by the mechanism how how to do it so uh, and uh, probably it was uh, even formulated uh, somewhat vaguely and so on uh, so in in my theory i i refute the principle of compositionality 
And uh, because, uh, again, returning back to the context uh, and to, to, to those three balls again, uh, when we uh, compose a reference uh, from several uh, layers of filters, like the, the first layer is, uh, uh, is using the property category and the, the particular range ball. And all, only three balls out of all the objects in the room will pass through that filter. But the problem with that filter is that the filter itself, it has no meaning. What has meaning is what is left from the context after passing through that filter, especially when that filter is multi-layered. So when we add another uh, layer, uh, this time based on property color and its range pink or red as we used. So we uh, filter out only one object. And in that context, uh, this set of layers, of layered filters, they pass through only one object which is of interest to us. Uh, in some cases, we may be interested in, in, a, in a set of objects. For instance, all the tall students in, in the class. Please join the, the basketball uh, section. So it, it can be several people. So I view uh, objects also as sets of objects that pass certain uh, uh, structure of those filters. But we need to remember that filters themselves, they do not have meaning. They just pass objects through them which qualify. So which meet certain uh, criteria uh, defined yeah. by that filter. So, and in the principle of compositionality, uh, we, we get this idea that words have some meaning, but words, because of the concept which I proposed in the paper, basically referential flexibility, they may have multiple meanings. And uh, in, in fact, uh, I, I mentioned a, a paper in, in, in there uh, that 80% uh, of English words have more than one meaning. So we, we cannot say that certain word has only one meaning and we will stack those meanings, compose the complex meaning out of those simple meanings. No, it doesn't so, sir, work that well that way. Yeah, I, I got it. Thanks. Uh, so, so, so certainly you're talking about policy yeah? this way. Uh, uh, I, and I, the I, uh, yeah, and this this is the second part of my question. It's, it's the proposition, not a sub question. The second part of it is is refu refuting compositionality. Is what it was very interesting and at the same time provocative, you know, to to I, refute, I agree uh, that it's it's quite risky, but uh, if we if we have to to propose a serious theory that will address many linguistic phenomena, we 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 have to be uh, risky at, at, at times because if uh, the theory. Uh, capable of explaining everything uh, using a compact uh, toolbox and do it efficiently and uh, I would even say elegantly, then why not refute some uh, misconceptions along the way? Well, I, I hope so. I, fingers crossed for you. Okay, you talked about two cognitive computational processes that uh, if I'm not mistaken 
I read the paper precisely two or three uh, okay, times. It was generalization versus specialization. You know, one is a uh, one is a bottom up process process, this uh, specializing different branching the other countries, uh, but, uh, types of to tokens as semiotics, like as a semiotics. And the other is, is, is absolutely the opposite. It's generalizing. It's the general, it's, 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 it's the coverage, it's the, it's the connection of all those atoms together. How do you, how do you, how do you define, explain, let's make it harder. And how do you make it plausible for, for, for at least to be uh, doable, at least uh, feasible based on the linguistic theories at the time? Would you please explain about it? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, again, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, I even uh, not explain this in in the in the language part of that paper. Uh, I explain uh, generalization in the uh, in the part of the paper where I explain the theory of intelligence, and sure. uh, and there I uh, basically introduce uh, those comparable properties. And uh, I, I am uh, claiming that when we use uh, words uh, like adjectives or nouns, we refer to ranges of various properties. Sometimes not one property, several ones. For instance, uh, word high, it can be high as in the height, or high as in the pitch, or high as in the uh, blood sugar content. content. So uh, the, there are different uh, aspects, different meanings of high. And the, those meanings are governed by which property that word refers at this particular moment. And so it, it, words, as they are taken alone, they do not refer to, to anything. They are uh, referring to some ranges only when we are talking about their use in, in, the, in the sentences, in utterances. So, but returning back to generalization, we have uh, this uh, concept of properties and ranges. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, if we consider uh, property furniture and a, a range, sub-range on that property chair, then uh, we may have specialization by, for instance, by such property as uh, material, or color. And because of that specialization, we will have wooden chairs or red chairs. So basically what we are doing at this point, we are introducing differentiating factors. So, and because of those differentiating factors, we achieve some specialization and we create subclasses. And when we have those subclasses and we ignore differentiating factors, we go up the, the level above and we generalize. So that's my approach based on, again, differentiation and comparable properties to this concept of generalization. Because traditional approach is based on, on the search for similarities. And that's, that's, a, that's a problem. Because uh, uh, not all similarities will provide uh, the, uh, the, the, this subclass. So we will not uh, achieve the 
the accurate uh, generalization using similarities. So, uh, and uh, I, I claim that uh, using differentiation, we will be uh, more computationally efficient in, in, with that respect. I, I see, thank you. Uh, Tim has a question. It, it means, does the category theory, you mean by category, are you entering into the field of logic or category theory? Category. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Tim, uh, Tim could you please? I, I, if Tim, I, I if honestly try to squeeze my theory uh, within the frameworks of the category theory, but uh, yeah. it, it probably, it, it uh, uh, again, category theory has a lot of useful pieces to it, but it, it has many pieces that are not relevant. And because of that, I, I had to develop uh, this uh, concept of multidimensional search and uh, just uh, stay away from category theory because uh, I, I don't want to, to carry all, all that extra luggage with, with me if, 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 you, if you understand. So in my um, so as I put it through my lens, I've got both in dimensionality mm -hmm. and some you know, RDF sort of structured you know, based um, structured semantics, which therein there is category theory. So some of the uh, some of the nomenclature that you were speaking of before in relation to furniture, chair, and the hierarchical structures is what I'd sort of put into that basket of category theory, which is not to say that everything can be put into category theory or that the lack of dimensionality is, is, is not a problem, you know, historically. Uh, anyway, thank you. Yeah. So uh, I, I agree that, uh, uh, and it, it was my, uh, uh, I spent several weeks uh, trying to uh, somehow um, negotiate my theory and the category theory and uh, to find how I can use category theory. I even contacted uh, several experts in, in that area, but uh, un unfortunately I got no response from them. Uh, but really, I, I, uh, I respect that, uh, that approach, but probably uh, we will have to just cut off many pieces from from category theory just to to take only several uh, valuable uh, concepts uh, and apply it here so because of that i i, I decided to go as it is uh, and uh, as proposed in in the paper in the, in the, in the current form but yeah. Definitely, I I would love to uh, to get in contact with uh, some uh, uh, experts uh, experts in category theory and uh, to discuss with them this uh, theory and uh, how we can uh, uh, join uh, efforts and uh, develop the the well this theory further and uh, to 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 the better of all the participants yeah you 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 already have have one alex professor Vyatkina is a well-known logician and linguist as and one of the members of the ukrainian academy of sciences she's not having a question please go ahead professor yeah and please unmute yourself if uh, Sorry, um, I have a reply no about comp compositionality. Um, I, I recall that uh, um, many years ago, uh, I wrote an article within our uh, uh, departmental uh, collective moniker, uh, context versus uh, uh, without context. And um, I'm not ready, of course, to reject um, Frege's uh, um, 
compositionality view. Uh, but uh, it seems to me that uh, Frege's uh, theory of compositionality uh, it has its, it, uh, its own life in in and meaning in logic and uh, in logical semantics. And um, another trend is. Um, without uh, uh, to avoid the principle of, uh, or reject principle of compositionality, and it has many ways of it, how to how it performed. And I uh, have uh, such articles um, in my collection, in my li uh, uh, computer library, um, in a, uh, in a journal of analytic philosophy, uh, concerning Bentham's contextualism and its relation to analytic philosophy. And um, it is, uh, it is um, uh, uh, stated that uh, Jeremy Bentham uh, was a predecessor or forerunner of uh, Frege's um, point of view on compositionality. And uh, the author, Silver Bronzo, uh, reject this or uh, oppose this and uh, uh, writes that um, Bentham developed his um, his point of view um, it, it, and he is not a forerunner of uh, Frege's constitutionally and uh, he tries to show that Bentham philosophy of language is developed within a philosoph philosophical framework that Frege's contextually is centrally concerned to oppose um, such a framework, um, uh, which I will uh, stipulatively uh, dub the empiricist framework, is characterized by two fundamental commitments. The first commitment is an atomistic conception of suppropositional meaning. It is assumed that genuinely significant words must have a meaning that is no, is in no way dependent on their propositional context. This commitment is derived more or less in shortly from an understanding of ostensive definition that runs deep in the empirical tradition, namely an understanding according to which some sort of ostensive act plays a fundamental role, a role in a non-circular explanation how words can first acquire and retain their meanings. So it is uh, for you, Alexander, to support your, your, your approach that such a point of view uh, really exists and it has the right to, uh, to be developed uh, further. And especially uh, as, uh, as I noticed that uh, this separate or, or uh, non-compositional point of view uh, is, um, became topical with this last, uh, large language uh, models. Uh, when uh, every word has its own history, has it, um, it has context or um, uh, some circle of meanings and, um, and multiple in, uh, in, in uh, multiple uses and multiple ostensive meanings and so on. And uh, I, I simply love vocabularies <laughs> from from uh, and very much and and it is very interesting uh, and uh, when I was a schoolgirl I simply was reading these vocabularies uh, especially uh, thesauruses different thesauruses and I have uh, several thesauruses are uh, English English and uh, Latin and so and I my favorite and I have a, it's, it's a pleasure to to know new words, new meanings, and so on. So it is like a game. It's a, a very, very good game uh, to know the the meanings. But uh, but uh, still, we uh, we use uh, uh, we use uh, we we find these meanings in in context, of course, in context of use, in context of of um, among other words, and uh, this vocabulary, um, the Zoras um, words are um, this the vocabulary words, and they remain in such uh, uh, in such form and such uh, narrow um, narrow without context. So we put it in context in our 
uh, speech uh, during our speech acts during uh, during uh, living uh, during live conversation during live uh, uh, exchange of uh, thoughts and so on. So, so this this has is another side in pragmatics, not in semantics, but in pragmatics, and this. Uh, um, uh, references of uh, every of each word is they are used in pragmatic context, of course, but uh, this is another side, simply another side of this problem. Thank you. Um, and I thank you, I thank you because uh, it, it's it's such a pleasure that we decided to to make it. Uh, for multiple participants and uh, your contribution makes this meeting even more engaging and interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually you are pushing uh, our discussion forward because uh, uh, in fact, uh, I mentioned all, all those pieces that you, you raised uh, in the paper for instance, uh, I, I mentioned the game of 20 questions, uh, mm -hmm. which allow to uh, differentiate uh, the, the particular object uh, uh, <laughs> intended by, by, by one participant, uh, by one player and uh, guessed correctly by the others. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and uh, why I mentioned that uh, that game because uh, basically uh, the game is is a very accurate uh, uh, illustration of how uh, my model works because mm -hmm. that's exactly the the filtering method uh, introduced in this paper. Mm -hmm. It's just called differently and probably it has uh, fewer uh, elements uh, to it, but uh, again. And uh, also why questions are important in natural languages. Uh, note that uh, we have a huge variety of question words in natural languages and we can basically address any constituent of any sentence. And if we do not have information about that particular constituent, but we have knowledge about all the others, then we can construct a question and address that white spot in our knowledge. And uh, that's how I propose learning uh, occurs in, 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 in human uh, education and in, in, in human development and, and so on. So uh, when, when we don't know something, but we know some relevant information, we formulate a question and then we perform this multi-dimensional search. We may ask questions other people, we may experiment just to see what will happen, or we, we can wait for clarifications and probably later we will infer answer to our questions and we will fill those white spots. And uh, with respect to how words acquire meaning, uh, I, 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 uh, I enjoyed reading some paper about uh, a, a philosopher, uh, De Saussure, and he, uh, he offered the idea that uh, words acquire meaning by, by convention. And that's that's perfectly fine with me because that's how I see uh, uh, words acquire meaning. Uh, but I add one, one more piece to it because this convention is, it doesn't come for free. It involves costs because to share this convention among huge uh, uh, populations, 
uh, among all the speakers of language is, is quite costly. So the bigger the community, the bigger the cost of reaching some convention. And because of that, in smaller communities, uh, we observe much faster development of, uh, of new terms, of uh, new meanings, of new uses of existing words. Uh, so uh, in, in small uh, communities, we, we observe uh, this uh, slang or jargon, and uh, it, it's perfectly explainable in, 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 within this framework. And uh, when we uh, talk how, how, we, uh, how we understand what meaning specific words have in a specific sentence, again, we are back to this uh, concept of questions and the uh, available information because words, they, uh, they represent a context for all the other words in, in a sentence. They impose restrictions, constraints on, on the meaning of, of uh, other words. For instance, uh, I, I already mentioned uh, the word high and its possible meanings uh, like uh, pitch or uh, height or uh, blood sugar content, right? So if I combine word high and uh, word key, which is also uh, 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 polysemious, but together, uh, uh, we 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 cannot say that uh, high key has a lot of possible meanings. It it can have only probably one. Uh, for me, it it has one particular meaning, namely high voice, and key is uh, characteristic of of voice, and. Uh, uh, in, in that sense, we, we will have uh, that high key is some feminine voice uh, in, in meaning. So, uh, and uh, this process of, comp uh, of filtering out unapplicable meanings of words, again, is based on this uh, process of filtering based on other words. So uh, I, I introduced this concept of uh, coherence constraints in the paper. And it means that uh, neighboring words in the sentence, not exactly adjacent words, all the words in the sentence, they impose these coherence constraints. Because if some word doesn't have uh, the uh, doesn't respect all those constraints, then we will have this famous phrase about uh, uh, green ideas sleeping furiously uh, from, from Chomsky. And uh, basically, again, we are, uh, we, we have all those tools that allow us to resolve meanings of words to, to what uh, speaker intended. And uh, returning back to your uh, doubts probably about uh, the, uh, well, my attitude to compositionality and context. Uh, what I want to achieve with this paper, with this theory, uh, not just uh, refute all other theories and uh, forget about them and impose one correct theory once and for all, not at all. Uh, what I want to achieve is to propose a new toolbox. Uh, what I propose, a new approach to the cognition and to its uh, uh, computational par paradigm. 
uh, mainly this uh, differentiation, uh, filtering, comparison, and multidimensional search based on comparable properties of objects. And uh, uh, you, you have to understand that actions are also objects. So what do you do? Question about, about action. Uh, who are you? Question about subject. And uh, uh, whom did you hit? Uh, question about object. And all, all those kinds of questions we have and we, in the question, we embed information about the category of the object qualifying for the answer. And also we impose all kinds of restrictions that need to be respected by proper answer, by correct answer. But it, it shouldn't be 100% accurate because in language, we probably are less uh, interested uh, in, uh, in incomplete and uh, undeniable truth. Because for instance, when we discuss some hypothesis, we, we, we don't know whether it's true or not, but we, we want to discuss it and to, to establish whether it is correct or not and whether it will help further, further research in that area. So, and uh, when we issue commands or questions, how can we say that commands or questions are true or not? It, it, it's nonsensical uh, to, to judge questions uh, in, in, that, in that respect, but it, within this theory, we, we can, understand question as a request for information uh, when we have when we provide all those constraints for the answer which we will accept and when someone is looking for the answer they they just go through all the sentences in in their memory because sentences with resolved meaning as I proposed this in, in the paper, they are uh, the way to represent knowledge in our head. Because our uh, mind, uh, it, it should have some zeros and ones uh, if we use computational allegory. And uh, when we use those sentences with all those constituents, then we have all the moving pieces we require to uh, perform this uh, intelligent magic, search for, for the answer, search for, for new knowledge. And uh, we, we don't have any limits to, to the depth of that new knowledge. So that, that's what, uh, uh, so I propose new tools. So let's consider them. Uh, in, in our research and in our father, father practice. So it's not a replacement yeah. in any way. I, I would even love to see one day how large language models and this theory uh, and comparable properties uh, combine their efforts and their uh, all the strong uh, uh, moments uh, and uh, produce what we are eager to achieve, uh, basically artificial general intelligence, which will help us to further the development of knowledge and science and uh, benefit for, for, for all the humanity. Yeah. I hope it makes sense. Yeah. Thank you both, Professor and Alex. Uh, I think we can, there are questions from Tim on the chat, I see. Uh, do you have it, Alex? Yeah, I, I, and, I will. And, and let me please make a clarification. By okay, we, sure. he, may, he means uh, you, he and I. 
we don't have this we singular we have a they singular there's okay. a paper about that a singular they but we don't have a singular we by we he means he and me we, we're, we're doing it together yeah of course uh there are some disagreements but we will cover get over it no problem we, uh, we, we will handle we will cover definitely it together okay i think uh there um I, i've i've sent you that emails of uh of both of us in chat let me thank all of you for participating in the event it was an honor on our side uh please if you have any any further questions keep us informed why uh why chat or you can ask questions raise your hand please and the, thanks, um, Alex. Alex, yeah, yeah. but the I, I did make a few comments. There were more comments. The one that's a bit more about of a question, or sort of a, a request for your thoughts on the matter, that it appears as though with the rapid evolution of these very big platforms globally, that new words are being invented. So, for example, it's fake news not false and misleading information that might end up with someone getting sued. It's, you know, um, the, again, the temporal thing. So, so if you look for COVID and then in Google, and then you search for articles from 2017, it will come up with a whole lot of them. Um, so, but in particular about language, it appears as though language is being invented that is similar to saying that there is fake books, like it is disinformation. It is, I mean, disinformation is still information. It's not wisdom. It's not, it's not structured. So it's not knowledge, but it's still information. I, I don't remember seeing the fake book section in the library that there, there was a magazine section, <laughs> but there wasn't, there wasn't a fake book section. And so, the implication is not simply about whether our sense making uh, between one another, but also it has legal implication because I'm not sure if there is law against disinformation as there is against falsely misleading information or, or, or other classifications of, of language. And so I, I guess the, 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 the question relates to this hypothesis that new language is being created because it has no legal meaning. And so it is a form of violence. Language is violence. And so how could language, how could language models or, or your work, uh, perhaps, what are your thoughts about this as, as, a, as an emerging issue that is an enemy of peace? Mm. In my view. Yes, please. Yes, uh, uh, actually, I, 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 I was thinking uh, a lot about uh, this uh, recent uh, developments uh, about large language models and their uh, making stuff up and uh, uh, all these concerns about uh, safety of AI and, and uh, etc. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, finally uh, we will have to well like uh, like many things in human in human history we will have to adapt to the availability of such instruments but we will need instruments that will uh, respect the the need for reliable information and the uh, uh, definitely such uh, instruments will appear uh, and they will be based on uh, completely different principles. For instance, uh, there will be, uh, uh, there will appear some uh, media where uh, journalist integrity will be respected beyond any measure because otherwise uh, no one will care to read that me media or listen to them and uh, and so on and uh, what i like uh, about uh, uh, this theory this proposed theory is that 
it it will be possible to prepare a personal assistant uh, on on a mobile phone and uh, uh, most likely uh, no one will care about having such personal assistant if it is unreliable so in my theory uh, I, I pay a lot of uh, attention to how to make it uh, rela reliable in processing information. So uh, because of that, I, I respect context. I, I respect uh, uh, ambiguities. And in, in case when uh, finally a reliable answer cannot be given, then we need to provide uh, indication that uh, the answer we we don't ho we don't have an, an answer or the answer that we have is is not certain is not reliable so if you want you you can go with it or help me to to find the the, the better answer so, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be I'd be very happy to and um and the fact that you're so deeply immersed in it is um is wonderful it's the pursuit yeah. that's more important than the um than the status if that makes sense yeah like fantastic thank you and thank you for for the questions so uh if there are no other questions I would like to thank you I'll, uh, Thank all of you for coming to Alex's uh, to listen about, to know more about Alex's theory. And of course, our theory. I'll make some modifications, of course. I, I won't let you go. Definitely. Okay. In, in fact, I, I welcome contribution and comments from all of you. And uh, I will uh, deeply appreciate that because uh, it, it, this theory is uh, in in the early stages of development, and it uh, it yeah, really I needs agree. your your contribution, your feedback, and uh, uh, any way it can be improved uh, is of enormous importance to us. I may ask okay. you for the for this paper to send me. Uh, I, I have already already sent you sent the yeah, chat. Really. But, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, where is it? It's, uh, it's also uploaded uh, uh, on LinkBuzz. I also upload what's more. If... This is one, this one. Compositionality in computational linguistics, this one. No, 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 no. this is the first one. The first one, the chat, oh. the name is uh, Naumenko. 23, 23, uh -huh. and so what's the 23, 23, now make the, uh, it's, it's a PDF, PDF file. Mm -hmm. I will do it again. I will upload it again, oh. no problem. And uh, uh, Reza, can you please also share yeah, the, sure. the link to the sub stack or I can do it. Yes, uh, I, 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 down that. Oh, Alexander great. thank you. Thank you. No, you're welcome. My pleasure. No, no problem. And uh, also, I I wanted to to mention that uh, definitely this is not the the last meeting that we have, and uh, yeah, sure. if you have interest and questions please send them and we will prepare another meeting to discuss all those questions and uh, probably some progress uh -huh. that we have. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. please do share your okay. feedback and uh, if you are interested, if we will be more than happy to uh, arrange another yeah. meeting. Exactly. exactly, I agree. So thank you for all of you, great appreciation for participating in this meeting. Really grateful, we're both very grateful to you. And Professor, Alex's paper is being uploaded once again. Uh, uh, so if there are no more questions,
then we can we can other we can have a, a, a as Alex said other uh, sessions for questions and answers. It's just beginning. It's just uh, the, there are lots of more steps to do. Lots of more modifications, revisions. We'll we're we're, we're going to have other conversations. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a flow of it. Now, Minko 23, that's the three, you can pronounce it right, yeah? Fresh. It's, a, it's also uploaded on LeanBuzz, LeanGolf.net, uh, so thank you all for coming to our discussion. That was a uh, oh. really, that was really honor for us. Yes. Wish you a wonderful evening or oh, thank uh, you. The, the time zones. Get it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you again. Thank uh, you for inviting thank me. You. It's been thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Wish you a wonderful yeah. evening. Bye. Yeah. Bless you. And, and see you in the future. Yeah. I certainly hope so. Yeah, this is, of, um, course. of course. The, the, you know, the freedom of thought for, for all members of our human family. Yeah. Definitely. You know, if, we yeah. have, if we have a, if we have a capacity to positively impact the world in that way, it's much better than um, many of yeah, the other things you. that have happened over the last recent years. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. See you. Bless you. Bless you.